Hey y'all, how you doing? Hope you're having a good day. So today, I'm gonna derive the second order polarization and second order susceptibility classically. So I had two previous videos sort of motivating this idea, and this is the actual part where anything nonlinear is happening. So, just recall that we're trying to solve the driven damped harmonic oscillator equation for the Lorentz model of the atom, well, an anharmonic version of the Lorentz model, and we write our x like this from perturbation theory, and we're only assuming we have two frequencies right now. So for the linear part, we plugged in x to this equation and got all this, and we solved that in the last equation. So now we're going to have to find all the terms with lambda t lambda squared in them. But we have an x squared term here, um, and we know that there's going to be some lambda squared terms from that in there, and there's also lambda squared there. So what we have to do is we're going to ignore everything to the right over here on this, to the right of this perturbative expansion here. And we're going to take this part and square it and see what we end up with, what has lambda squared in it. Okay, so the only term with lambda squared in it is x1 squared here. And also x2 up here. So if we plug our x into this equation... Um, and collect all the terms with lambda squared, we're going to get this equation. So we get that equation, where the right side has disappeared, because we only multiply the left by uh, lambda and not higher order lambdas. So... Yeah, with that assumption, we're assuming we have um, not a gigantically huge electric field. Kind of vague, but that's as far as I can reason uh, that. It just can't be a gigantically huge electro field. Okay, so, oh, this has lambda squared in it. All the lambda squared goes away. And then we're also going to, uh, we're assuming two frequencies. So... We already know x1 because we found that from the previous video, and that is this. Okay, so our x1 part is going to be all this squared. And I'm not going to square all this because we're going to get 16 terms, but only... There's only going to be sort of eight, um, I don't know if you, it's right to call them unique terms, but there's going to be eight terms plus their complex conjugate. And you can sort of see that in your head, um, because when we FOIL it out, we're going to get this term squared, we're going to get this term squared, well, this one squared and this one squared, but that's just the complex conjugate of those, so we're not writing the bottom ones squared. So there's those. There's this times this, there's this times this, uh, and there's this times this. So, in other words, here's the eight terms we're going to get. Okay, so there is the eight terms we get. Um, this term I'm counting as two. 
plus there's eight complex conjugate, and that gives us 16 terms. Now, each of these terms is responsible for a different nonlinear phenomenon. So if you have two frequencies, this first term, you're going to get basically a source of electromagnetic wave that has a wave vector of 2k1 and a frequency of 2 omega1. And that is called second harmonic generation. So I'm going to refer to this term as the second harmonic generation of omega-1. And I'll abbreviate second harmonic generation by H SHG. And similarly, this would be the SHG of omega-2. And in this term, this phenomena is called some frequency generation, or SFG. This term here is pretty interesting because the exponents cancel. And this is called optical rectification. And these last two terms here are difference frequency generation. So there's five major types of second order nonlinear phenomena and these are the five types. Well, really, there's only four types. There's second harmonic generation, some frequency generation, optical rectification, and difference frequency generation. So now, we're going to do a similar thing to like we did in the last video. We're going to assume a form for x2, and then we're going to use the fact, which I called theorem 1 in the last video, that the coefficients in front of some variable, if they're on the left and the right side of the equation, they have to be equal. Sorry, I don't know a name for that uh, fact, but I called it theorem 1. So we're going to have to assume x2 has a form. Well, we're going to have to solve for each of these different sort of phenomena uh, separately because else is going to be way too much algebra, and I don't want to show that much. But first, we're going to solve the perturbation for SFG, and I think that's the easiest to see how it generalizes to the other ones. So we're going to have to assume an amplitude part. So SFG, I'm just going to call that not, plus a exponential part. And the exponential part is going to look exactly the same as this exponential part because when we plug it into our main equation, this equation here, or here, then the exponents are going to cancel. So that's why we're a form a, or that's why we're assuming a form like this. And we're going to have to find the first and second derivative. Okay, so now I'm going to plug everything we just did into this equation. So I'm going to plug in the SFG for x1, and I'm going to plug in this for the x2. Okay, so I just plugged in for everything in the equation on the following page and I canceled the exponential terms so yeah this is what I did this equation here I am just considering SFG so I plugged in this x2 here I also plugged in uh, this for x1 squared and I dropped the 2. 
Okay, so now we're gonna just collect uh, all the XSFG not terms on one side. Okay, so there, we've solved for the amplitude of uh, some frequency generation of a single particle. So it's equal to that. And I'm sorry that I'm messing up so many minus signs, but that's going to happen. Usually I catch myself, um, but if I don't and it happens to just stay in the video and you think there's a minus sign where there should be a plus sign, then it's, it's very likely. Um, okay, so in the previous video, we solved for this x1 knot and this x2 knot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the knots because all I have to do is just multiply both sides by the exponential. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. And notice that you can rewrite this product of exponentials as this. So, I mean, they can cancel each other. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my notes from the previous video, and I'm going to plug in for x1 naught and x2 naught here. Okay, so now we don't have any X's on the right side, we just have the electric fields. And notice that uh, this part along with this denominator is just X1. And this part along with this denominator part is just X2. And so I'm going to simplify this a little bit and I'm going to rewrite my denominators as a commonly used denominator function. Okay, and there we go. Now, we recall that the second order polarization is equal, the second order polarization, and we have to divide all them up into the, um, sort of process. So the, the nonlinear process we're considering here is SFG uh, between the two frequencies omega 1 and omega 2. So the polarization is going to be equal to epsilon naught times chi 2 and we're only thinking about the chi 2 component for SFG and it's going to be a multiplication between the two electric fields. And that's also equal to negative epsilon naught times the number of oscillators times the charge of the oscillator times x2 for SFG. And so we plug x2 for SFG in there and we can find our chi SFG. Once we do that, we get the following chi SFG. Okay, so it's that simple. <sighs> simple, right? Yeah, not really. <clears throat> but anyways, that's the result we were looking for for the SFG. Now, I think you can guess the the second harmonic generation chi's and 
I mean polarizations. But I'll give you the chi's. The chi's are going to be like this. So for the second harmonic generation of the first frequency, it's going to look like this. And for the second frequency, and for DFG, and for optical rectification. Okay, so I had to cheat and go look it up because I didn't want to go through it all again and I wanted to end this video. I'm sure you want this video to end too. Okay, so the susceptibility for optical rectification is just this. And for DFG, I got it wrong because we're gonna, one of these is gonna have to have a minus sign. The omega 2 is. Okay, so that's how you get the second order nonlinear susceptibility uh, derived classically by using an anharmonic correction term to the Lorenz model of the atom. And so in the next video, we're going to go even further and do the third order nonlinear part. And that is referred to as four wave mixing. And in that video, we're going to encounter a four-way mixing process. My favorite four-way mixing process, ramen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.